Was that something else? Sorry. No, thanks. Okay. Hello, bonjour, bienvenue, welcome to all. I do recognize some names and faces of others that we've spoken to recently. Um, this is the first of its kind. This one, this SLE session is called SLE 101, Overview and Frequently Asked Questions. As I mentioned before, there will be many others um, at many other times, many other types of sessions, so, so keep, keep an eye on things going forward. In a minute, I'll be introducing you to Morgan, the star of the show, one of our in-house experts on, uh, on SLE. And she actually has many years of experience with teaching, with program coordination. She'll be doing the majority of this uh, session in, a, in about a minute or so. Right before that, about 30 seconds, uh, a bit of an introduction on LRDG for those that haven't already you know, worked with us or haven't already heard of us. We've been around since about 2002. That's over 18 years of experience. Uh, providing various types of SLE and, and, of course, training to government departments. We're actually in use across numerous major departments, such as ESDC, which is Service Canada, Shared Services, RCMP, um, many others. It's fairly new that we are working directly with individuals like you're seeing here today, but that's why we'll have many more sessions like this. Um, we actually tried to calculate how many you know, learners, how many employees have been over the years. 25,000 is the number that we're going with confidently. It's a bit more, but hard to say, hard to say with 100% accuracy. Um, so for many of you that don't know about us, we've actually built a curriculum. We've built our own online platform that aligns with the ABC levels of the government. And as of this summer, very brand new, there are now practice, new brand new practice SLE tests inside those modules. Stand by towards the end of this and we'll, we'll share a, a bit of an offer. We'll share, you know, um, uh, an option for everybody to get on board and try some of those tests as well. Um, last thing, of course, in, in a way, some of the more important news as well, big news from this summer is a, a brand new standing offer awarded to LRDG government wide available to all, all government departments for specifically oral SLE prep in both English and in French. Uh, I imagine that some of you have already done that and, and it'll help a lot of others who may want to take some training after the session today. So last but not least, a bit of a housekeeping note as Robert shared in the chat. Feel free to ask questions on the fly in the chat and we'll get to it towards the end of the uh, session today. On that note, merci, enjoy, and Morgan, take it away. Okay. Uh, and does everybody hear me? Yes? Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, so um, I will start and I apologize first because I don't have a very, very good English, but I'm trying my best and <laughs> and I'm taking class at LRDG. So I'm, I'm getting there. I'm going to be bilingual soon. So um, I would like to uh, continue on it and see what we are going to see today so um it's just a quick description and of the format of the esl test sld test sorry and uh we're going to take a look at each level a b c and we're going to an answer at the end some frequently asked questions and discuss about the testing and test validity so um the first sec like the first slides okay are about like the test how like the format of the test and uh we have a lot of tutors that are trained and that know the format of the test so um we are going to to look at this but you will find also these elements like on the website we'll give at the end of the slide i think and uh we are going to add like what we add it's more information about us about how we can train you and um, help you to reach your level so let's start so um of course as you know um you have like you will have uh -huh, depending on your uh, supervisor and on your um manager you will have to pass free tests or no um uh, the most common one the oral language assessment like it's oral the most difficult well, the most difficult test of all you have the test of reading comprehension and the test of written expression LRDG can prepare you for all these tests okay but of course the most challenging one is the oral language assessment so um so uh Okay. 
So that's okay. Sorry, I'm gonna put you in my screen right now uh, at my left. So um, uh, everyone can read that. But the oral language assessment uh, it assesses oral communication ability in second language. Uh, it's uh, currently a web conference call uh, on Teams, and it lasts twenty between 10, 20 and 40 minutes, more for 40 minutes. And you will have to answer questions about your work, your familiar activities and your studies. Um, and the questions are progressing, progress in difficulty. And you will have to, to show like if you have reached a B level or a C level. So the question difficulty is increasing. Um, about the reading comprehension, so it's a test. Uh, you have like a variety, it's such a very hard word to say, a variety of texts, including emails, notes, letter bulletins, reports, and research papers. And you have 90 minutes maximum to complete the test. Um, it's uh, 60 multiple choice questions. Um, only 50 counts towards your score, and 10 are pilot questions. And it's of course online. About like this, all this information I give there, like are very public information. You can find them like over um, the website. So that's why I'm I'm speaking I'm talking fast or quick. I don't know. I'm talking fast, but that's something you can like uh, you can find. Um, we can provide you the link and you can find it. But it's just like. Uh, a presentation, but maybe it's more clear that way. So uh, the test of written expression uh, is made up of a variety of tests, uh, as in the test of reading comprehension. You have 90 minutes maximum to complete the test, complete, 64 multiple choice questions, and 55 count towards your score. Uh, it's like a fill in the blank and error identification. And uh, so the format of the test are very like, like you're not going to going to be surprised by the test. It's it's common to fill in the blank and to identify the error, and it will be administered online also. So for your levels, uh, like I know it's a bunch of um, numbers and letters, but as you know, like uh, C is the most advanced level, of course. Um, and uh, you have like some certain score to achieve in written expression and reading expression to um, to reach like the E, B, or C level. So of course, like it's just numbers, but uh, <laughs> so it's like the more uh, higher score you get, the more level, the highest level you are. So I don't think we're going to have a lot of questions about it. Oops, I'm sorry. I don't know where I am. Okay, did you see my screen? Okay. Oop. Hello? Does anyone see me? Because it seems like it rocks. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know, like the, the slide. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Monique and Elizabeth and everyone for your support, like over technical difficulty. I think I'm in the right slide. Uh, so um, we are talking about the oral now, like it's the most important, the most challenging uh, part of your, like if you have to take the free test, if you are like, if you want to reach a BBC or CBC, like if you have to take the free test, the most challenging one is the oral part. So uh, for a level A, like it's a minimum level of second language oral proficiency that is required for positions. So you deal there with simple repetitive issues in routine work related situation. Of course, I can explain that way much better in French, but um, that's just brilliant points. So you must be able at this level um, to ask and answer simple questions about your name, addresses, dates, times, number. You have to be able to give simple instruction to like, I don't know, to a coworker, to someone like 
uh, an employee of yours. So uh, you get you have to be able to give um, instruction in routine work related situation. Okay, but it's not like very hard situation to deal with. It's just like you must know how to describe very simply like uh, your everyday tasks. Uh, and of course, be able to exchange greetings, but that's not the problem in general. So uh, for level A, like written test, uh, you have to be able to understand simple text, comprehend the principal subjects and takeaways, uh, pick up information, like relevant information in the text, like dates, numbers, and names, of course. Um, and you are not expect like they don't expect you to read complex or detailed information in the second language because that's not um prob ad adapted like adjust to this level so uh for the reading um you have like like okay some reading related tasks at the e level include like filling something distributing processing requests like work orders, pick out specific units from a written test, uh, and you must be able to read internal communication, emails, letters, uh, forms, like such as invoices and requisitions, and simple tests. tests. But I don't know how many of you uh, have got to reach your A level, but I don't know if you're like, um, if like you're the majority of the crowd here, I don't know how to say Jeremy. I'm sorry, but like I don't know if the, like all the people in this uh, chat are reaching, are trying to reach um, a level A. So we'll see that. Okay. Uh, so level B, like um, say um, the level is required for position, like. Um, that require pardon, for positions that require departure from routine, routine use of the second language. So speaking expectations are more higher than level A. You have to be able to sustain a conversation on concrete topics, uh, reporting on steps taken, delegating, delegating tasks and providing instructions, providing description explanations, deliver presentation on concrete topics and answer follow-up questions. Um, we are going to see like the difference with the level C after that, but um, of course, like this task, like this, um, this, uh, how do you know that? These bullet points, you have to know that to know how to do that in your level C, of course. But level B is very like focused on descriptions and detailed descriptions. So, um, well, I don't know, there may be shortcomings in pronunciation or grammar, but that cannot interfere with communication. We must be able to understand you, even though you can do like maybe some, like you make some mistakes on pronunciation or grammar. And I just want to add here that pronunciation is not accent, okay? It's very, uh, okay, you are not judged on your accent whatsoever. You are judged on your pronunciation. So that's a little nuance I wanted to, to talk about right now. Um, okay, uh, so you won't be expected to express hypothetical situations or more advanced topics. Like the topics with hypothetical situation, it's a C level, okay? So B level is more focused on describing something you have experienced in the past or now, something you have to do in the future, but describing the tasks and like like don't uh talk about like speak about okay speak about something you never experienced in your life like some very hypothetical questions but we are going to see that that's the most central fact so for all the written part of level b um, um in addition to the criteria in level a of course you must demonstrate demonstrate a sufficient mastery of grammar and vocabulary. You must be able to communicate effectively on work-related topics, comprehend explicit information. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so 
uh, that's important at the end. While the basic in communication is there, the written test may require corrections in grammar and vocabulary and style revision. Up. I'm sorry, I'm switching back and forth. So for the level, level, B, level B reading, uh, you must be demonstrating a sufficient mastery of grammar and vocabulary. You must be able to communicate effectively on work-related topics, comprehend explicit information. Um, like it's the same uh, advertisement, not, not advertisement, sorry. It's the same warning as the other one. Um, so you must be able to uh, read correspondence, routine messages, brief text, um, and you will be able to modifying or adding to context, descriptions, present observation and conclusions, pardon, summarize the text or meeting in point form. So, level C is last the most challenging one, of course. Uh, so you must be uh, at ease, so comfortable like in communicating subtle, complicated, sensitive, and abstract ideas. That's kind of my that was kind of my point with hypothetical question. Something that never happened. It's hypothetical. So we you are going to be in a place that okay, you have to uh give your opinion and discuss or answer questions with a hypothetical or conditional situation that are submitted to you like you have to uh, be able to understand it's hypothetical because you will recognize some of um some of the grammatical structure in this in the questions and you must be able to and uh, to reply to that to respond to that in the proper form so you must be able to elaborate in great detail on a given topic, provide a detailed explanation or rationalization, uh, describe people or situation, but in depth. Okay, that's very important. Like level B, you have to know how to describe people or situations, but right there, like it's a step above that. Okay, like you must give details and uh, maybe perspective on what you just, what you are describing. Uh, you have, of course, uh, have to be able to form and support opinions. That's a very big, um, big um, like uh, competent skills to have in the new format. You can discuss policies, procedures, regulation, program, different aspects of work related scenarios. Uh, you must be able to present complex topics, provide counsel and advice to employees on pos potentially sensitive topics. Um, you have to know that you are going to be like uh, challenged on a future, the future position you may have. Okay, so of course we're going we're going to ask you something about how do, can you handle this kind of this type of employee like does that happen to you before blah, blah, blah. so um you are they are taking into account your future position that's interesting so you have to be able to serve on the selection board or an interview board okay so in written, okay, not a lot of you, I think, um, has to have a written a C level written, but I don't know. Um, but it's H where I think. Uh, no, it's CBC. Okay, usually it's CBC. So at a C level, um, you are expected to write articulately in a range of work situations, both formal and informal clear and coherent, co coherent, oh my God, that's hard, coherent manner. In addition to fully developing and presenting their own ideas, uh, you must be able to correct test, clarify the meaning, or improve the tone and the conciseness. At this level, as a written content on a C-level employee should require few corrections and use advanced vocabulary, grammar, and spelling. I will, will talk about it later so in reading like um <clears throat> so uh that's uh the same like the same bullet points i before but that's the important part is like you will be reading briefing notes correspondence memorandum like memoranda in english reports research papers 
uh, comprehensive summaries, detailed presentations, recommendations, recommendation, recommendation, communications, including providing information or comments on controversial topics. So that's the big difference. So your test is valid for five years. Um, so you have like some nuance in this kind of uh, statement. Okay, that's the statement, but for an employee in the same position, the test is valid for indefinitely, provided that the linguistic profile of the position is not raised above the person's skill level, and a manager may reassess, reassess a candidate at any time, depending on concerns or policies within that department. So, where to start? That's uh, the interesting part. Um, so, we provide you like a diagnostic placement test to assess your strengths and weaknesses. Then you are placed accordingly in, your, in our SLE curriculum and is, this curriculum is updated regularly along with uh, Public Service Commission content. You can do uh, part-time training or full-time training. Okay, both are available. And so uh, at this point, I don't know like um, if you want more detail about it, but maybe later, Jeremy, like about the methodology on itself, maybe we see that later. Uh, so, um, okay, just I'm getting back a little bit. So when you are assessed to a level okay we have like a methodology based on module and depending on the module you're in you're at okay and on your goal you will have a course plans adjust to your needs okay so so that's kind of my point because LRDG, uh, during your training you we have three points okay where uh, you can have like a simul evaluation like we we plan we schedule a simul evaluation with evaluators that are trained to do that and to after module seven imagine you are placed at module seven uh, after module seven we uh, scheduled a simul evaluation a uh, to see if you have reached a level after module seven that's like you must have a strong level, level, level A, level A. Oh my God, French, English. No, you must have after module seven. After module 12, you must have like, you must have reached a strong level B. After module 15, you must have reached a strong uh, level C. Of course, if your initial assessment, you have like, you've been placed, placed in module 13, uh, it will like indicate that the, the simul evaluation you're going to get is simul evaluation for C level after your module 15. So it's exactly in the condition of the exam. It's not with your usual tutor that you have. So it, it puts you in a good conditions. I don't know if you can say that in English, but in French it's, it's, <laughs> it's the same. In good um, shape. In good shape. In good yeah. shape. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Um, but I assure you, I speak French very well, but not so much in English. So uh, for the simul evaluation, uh, there are four, five criteria that exactly like the, the official exam you will have. You have fluency, and this is the most important one. Vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, comprehension. Um, if you don't obtain um, a C, for example, in fluency, and you want to reach for a C level, you cannot have a C. Even though like vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, comprehension are C, if you don't have a C in fluency, like that's not good. You're not getting your C. So that's one of the main criteria, and we work a lot on it during our session, our SAD prep session. Because if you hesitate too much, it means like you, you have you have not mastered the language, I can say that, and not hesitating about the idea you want to give to the evaluator or like or, or on your opinion, like that's not it. If you hesitate on grammar structures, conjugations, that's where they say, okay, 
this learner is not fluent, like the candidate is not fluent enough. So that's kind of the most important one. Um, so uh, now, um, so that's kind of what I was saying. The small evaluation is oral, okay? But if you want to practice uh, your written and reading skills, uh, we have now in our module, after module seven, after our final quiz in the module, you have SLE practice test with questions, fill in the blank questions and um, find, find mistakes, find mistakes, things like this. And so at three points, module seven, module 12 and module 15, you have this test, like it's, you're in front of the computer, of course, you did your final quiz of your module and then you have a little SLE practice test with uh, 25, 30 questions and like to, to, yeah, to put you in the same situation, like in, in good condition and in good shape to um, do your official exam after that. Yep. So uh, for uh, the tutoring support, um, you can have an individual training or group training. The group training is two, uh, two to five people maximum uh, training sessions, and uh, depending on your um, on the program you're on. For example, if you're a full-time learner, or if you're a part-time learner, or even an acceler accelerated part-time learner. Full-time learners, you have 15 hours a week of tutoring session, so it's a lot. It's three hours a day, but it's very efficient, of course. Accelerated part-time, you have five hours a week, one hour a day. That is also efficient and you're in individual. And for groups now, I think things are changing right now. So I cannot give you like a, a very like um, um, oh, accurate answer maybe because it, these are changing right now. Okay, we are making some um, some changes because uh, it was like when you were in a group you 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 didn't have class every sessions every day but like it's so um, it's going to change so i don't want to to give you false information or something it's not um quite uh we are not quite there yet but it's very soon um so um okay so our tutoring staff is trained uh, for SLE prep, of course. Like you only have, if you are in SLE prep, so if you have passed the modules and you, you, you are at the point where you have to take SLE prep, we have people trained for that. So uh, they know the contents, the contents of the exams, they know the format, and so they are able to help you as much as possible. Uh, we offer like a, a wide range of availabilities. It's seven days a week, uh, 6 a.m. to midnight, um, especially for people in BC, <laughs> uh, like, and for maximum scheduling flexibility. So that's what we do. For the test scheduling, like it's the official test, so it's not, um, it's not, I don't know, um, it's not our, our duty to do that, but you will receive an email confirming the date and time on your test from the organization that requested your assessment. So Public Service Commission will also send you an email containing uh, a link, MS Teams link, before your scheduled test date. Uh, if a, um, your test is rescheduled, the department will inform you of the new date and time, of course. Uh, your or original Teams link will still be valid, so you will not receive another one, so keep the link. Oh, so we, like, I'm sorry, I, I, I speak very fast, I spoke very fast. So uh, it's questions and answer period, do you have a question or comment that you want to type on the chat box or want to ask me maybe if I, um, I don't know if I. We have a ton of questions, a ton of comments. We'll try to get through a lot of them. First things first, merci Morgan, merci à tous. Thank you everybody for joining. Obviously keep the questions coming. We have a couple more minutes. If we can't get to it here today all together, we'll keep note of it. We'll keep the conversation going. We'll try to help as much as we can. 
The most common question we got here so far today is, of course, for the recording. So everybody here will automatically get that. Uh, you can easily contact us directly and, and you'll get the recording as well. Share it with others, no problem. As mentioned at the beginning, there will be other sessions like this. For Morgan, um, doing this in English, I want to thank you. It is not easy, as everybody here can attest. Working in your second language is, is what we're here for. So no worries at all. We'll, we'll help you just like you'll help all of us and, and we'll all do this together. Um, another couple quicker questions we got were on the test. So of course there's public service commission evaluations that are not administered directly by LRDG. Up until a few weeks ago, the public service commission was, was down and had mentioned uh, allowing departments to go direct to a supplier. LRDG was one of those suppliers administering official tests. Uh, one of the questions I got was, does that test, is it valid for five years? So it's a bit of a gray area. That test result is considered valid by your department that's looking to hire you or promote you, but it is not stored in your you know, file with the Public Service Commission. So if you were to leave to another department, they may not recognize LRDG's test. So that's, that's our answer for that. Um, another couple questions we got were on our own testing. So in addition to free diagnostic test reports, which we offer online, we offer oral evaluations. We also offer something called a simul evaluation. As the name implies, it's literally a simulation evaluation of the Public Service Commission format. And there's two types, one of which is as a candidate, you know, to be promoted or hired by a department. Another is to take that test before being uh, given training. So it's a very detailed analysis of your current level to then give you a module number along our curriculum to provide training. And then, of course, to move over to SLE prep, which, which is, was another question, partially uses our modules, partially uses existing government materials, practice tests, all of that. Um, were there any other questions as I was getting into that? PowerPoint presentation, will that be shared? I definitely believe so. I see Robert nodding, absolutely. Um, any other questions that you guys wanna remind me of before we call it a day? Rebecca, I know you, good to see you. You'll be able to chat a little bit about the 18 hour SLE course, absolutely. So SLE, the concept of second language evaluation can be done in numerous ways, part-time, full-time, individual, group, uh, accelerated part-time, we talked about all of that. The 18 hour SLE course that we have is I don't want to say it's a fast track or accelerating you to the end goal, but it's a, it's, a, it's a shorter version. It's designed for once you're already at the level that you're supposed to have. It's a shorter version, an accelerated version of the course to help you get everything in the final kind of days and weeks before your exam. Um, and that's something that we've been offering for years now to, to, to service Canada and shared services. Do you do training for oral only for level C? We absolutely, so again, a lot of our training is all encompassing. It can be all things at once. It could be professional development. It could be SLE, and it could be for any one of the SLE levels that you need, both for B and for C. So we get every combination of, you know, I have my B, I have my C, I have my E in this, I need my B in that. And, and we can pull out different elements of our modules, of our training, and focus exclusively on one uh, or, or multiple of those competencies. So in general, our methodology is always personalized, always individualized. You're always only getting what you as an individual need. Um, and, and that's why it starts with a detailed assessment. And that's why, uh, that's, that's how our methodology helps in that, in that way. I believe I got through all of the questions. Did I forget anything else? Can we sign up privately? Absolutely. The cost, it, it, it's hard to say. This is a question from Janice. It's really hard to say the cost because everybody's so different. And Janice, you're gonna get only what you need. So after evaluating you, we'll give you a number of hours, we'll give you a course plan. That could differ from somebody else who even has the same need. It's always, it's always a personalized basis. So the cost, we really do have to connect with you. We're happy to, to work with you individually, give you that free assessment and kind of, you know, estimate what your costs would be as well. Uh, SLE prep course years ago has absolutely been modified. It is always modified. Our test formats have changed. We're always adding in new SLE things as, the, as things evolve. We're updating our modules in the same way. So that was another question from Jeff, thank you. 
um, you know, the whole modules, depending on when you've taken them, have been redone uh, to be more modern and more animated now. So that's that's important to note. Um, thank you for, for the thanks. Uh, I think if that's the last of the questions, the last thing I'll say is really keep the conversation going, get in touch with us. As I mentioned, we do have free diagnostic tests and we can happily provide access to our modules in a, in a trial capacity. We are very flexible with payments of our modules. There's subscriptions by, you know, by year, by month, depending on the time frame of your study. They're actually included free of charge with SLE prep training. So that's one thing. But if you just want to see where you stand, I'm happy to, to open an access for you for you know, a couple of weeks and, and allow you to take the diagnostic test. And, and of course, we can have a direct conversation at any point. Morgan, anything else from you? Anything that I would have forgotten before we thank everybody and already get to work on planning the next one? I think it's okay. Um, and uh, I'm very glad that a lot of people are here. And I hope like you will be motivated and join us. Uh, we have very good tutors and I was one of them, so I know that. <laughs> and so, um, yeah. Uh, don't hesitate to continue like to post on the Facebook a conversation questions and we will try to answer that. Um, and yes, so I don't have anything to say. You mentioned a good point. I hope everybody here is in our existing government Facebook group that we've created. Robert can share the details there. That's where we'll promote the additional sessions. That's where we'll continue to post answers and, and provide information based on, on what you guys are looking for. So definitely keep, uh, keep an eye on that as well. Thank you all for joining us. As I mentioned, this was our first. We're going to find many more of these. I'm very, I love to see all the names here that we've spoken with recently. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I know I did. And talk to you all very soon. Best of luck with your exams and everything in the meantime. Merci. Bonne journée à tous. Bye. Au revoir.